Welcome to the Traveling Professors. I'm Professor Bob. And I'm Professor Sherry. And together we are the The Traveling Traveling Professors. Professors. Our show this time is about some tips when traveling through the Loire Valley in France, which is one of the most beautiful places to travel with the chateaus and the river and everything else. And I've been there three times. I went once with a school group where I was one of the chaperones. And then Sherry and I have been there two other times, one first time in 2016 and the other time in 2018. So we've seen all the different modes of transportation, different types of methods of seeing it, uh, the buses, the tours, the chateaus. So this is going to be just a little brief run through on some of the different aspects that might help you if you're planning to take a trip to the Loire Valley. So we hope you enjoy it. Here is a map showing the Loire Valley. You can see the river and you can see two different types of towns. We have the ones in white, which are major cities and hubs, if you will. And then you have those in red, which are small towns and, of course, also host chateaus. Of course, as a matter of fact, all of these things that are marked here have chateaus and castles and all sorts of other stuff involved. And one of the things to look at is the of the four. Now, Le Mans is, if you're going to use Le Mans as one of your locations to see the valley, as you can see, it's, it's quite a distance away. So you'd be taking, moving down to one the other places, then that would take a lot of time. Uh, Orleans is kind of the same way. So Angers is also a little bit out of the way. So if you're going to use a major city as your hub for visiting the valley, Tours is probably your best bet. Uh, it is a site where you can uh, take the T- TGV and you can take other trains. Of course, it has an airport and all sorts of other things. So if you want to stay in a major city, Tours is your choice. Otherwise, you can stay in any of the other little towns there. They will have good access for the most part. Some of them are going to be a little harder to get to. I'm going to use this map, which comes from Rick Steves book on how to tour France to show you different options that you can do and how we travel. Now, when I went over the first time, which was in 1987, I was one of five chaperones on a French group that came from our high school at Park Hill, and we went all over France for about 13 or 14 days. And our trip to the Loire worked like this. We were up at Mount Saint-Michel. We got up in the morning. We went to see Saint-Malo very quickly. Then we drove south to Angers, and then from Angers, we visited Asile Rideau, and then we spent the night in Tours. The next morning, we got up, and we visited Chenonceau, and then drove all the way up to Chartres, and it was pretty quick. I mean, we were at Asile Rideau for probably an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Uh, We got into Tours late in the evening, and we didn't get to see any of of that city. I, I took a group of the kids to one of the churches. And the next day we went to, when we went to Chenonceau, we were there early in the morning, had lunch. And so we were there about two and a half hours. And there are about 40 of us in the group. We're just kind of Hey, one question that comes up. All right, I'm going to the Loire Valley. What kind of transportation am I going to use? Well, let's start with renting a car. We were informed that most of the places that Sherry and I stayed, that that's pretty much what Americans do is they rent a car. Sherry and I only did that once and not in the Loire Valley. We rented this Skoda from uh, Bessicom to drive out in the country and see where Sherry's family had come from. Only way to get there. You couldn't get there by train. They didn't have any buses that went there. It was by car. And the one thing you do if you're going to get a car in Europe, you better drive a shift. It's not going to be automatic. You're going to have to change all the gears yourself. So Sherry drove because she is really good at it. That allows you a lot of options. Of course, you are driving in a strange area, but you are on the same side of the road as we are here in America. Now, it would be a problem for the British, but otherwise, it's pretty much just like driving anywhere else, except you need to know the signs. And there are a lot of things on YouTube which can give you information on how to drive in France and the little tricks of the trade and whatever. But some of these towns where you will go to visit the chateaus are going to have incredibly narrow streets and sometimes it's probably more trouble than it's worth. I know when we were on various guided tours, it was nice to have the guy and the girl know where they were going. Now, if you're not going to drive, then there's the big bus. This is the type of bus that we would have had on our trip when I was with the the school group. You can get packages from Paris just about anywhere in France. They'll give you a couple of days, three days, six days, whatever. And you have a whole host of people that are going with you. 
I really only do that if if there is no other alternative. We would do this in Greece and going to Delphi, and that was fine. But I like to have a little smaller group. The downside of the big group is you get in one place, you have a bunch of people. It can get a little confusing. But the, it is usually a reasonable option. And I would suggest if you're looking for kind of tours to look for, uh, go to uh, – I use a, a Viator, V-I-A-T-O-R, where you can find all sorts of different groups. Groups. Always look at uh, the uh, responses, you know, what the feedback is. You can use TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor will not only give you options on what to, what to pick up, but it will also give you the background and uh, ratings for other tours. So that's a plus. If you're not using the big bus, there's the medium bus. Some groups will have the medium bus. I really never have been. Sherry and I have not been on one of these, but it is a smaller, more intimate group. And the downside with a smaller, intimate group is hopefully you get a bunch of people who are interested <laughs> in what you're seeing. And then you see the small group, the nice minivan. Now, whenever we've been in the Loire Valley and we've taken a, a trip with another group, this is what we've used. This is actually the uh, the minivan of a group called Aco Dispo Private Day Tours. Eight is the most that they will they will take. And what I like about them is that you go to the location. Uh, they they operate out of tours, but they'll also pick you up at Ambois, and they will take you on whatever tour you've so selected. There's half day tours. There's all day tours. They will take you to the site. They'll give you background of what there is to see, and they will let you go. You're not going to have a guided tour here and you will have to pay for the ticket to get in but this is like really having a taxi and they take you to the location give you plenty and and it's always have plenty of time we've enjoyed that we've used them on multiple occasions so that's that's one option as well then you of course have the train now here is the tgv that you're not really going to be touring the loire on the tgv that's how you get there and that's how you go back it's about two hours from paris to tours. Uh, they have a TGV station just outside of, of tours, and they also have something that will go directly into the main station. Once you are in the valley and you have gotten into, let's say, tours, or if you went to Orleans or one of the other big cities, then what you'll usually be taking is this train. This is the local territorial train. They're usually anywhere from three to six cars, and they will travel back and forth through the Loire Valley. Actually, everywhere you go in France, they have these and they're very quick they run about every 30 to 45 minutes and they'll take you almost all the stations are right across the street or a couple of blocks away from some of these spots so frequently what sherry and i do is if we can walk to the location relatively easily and i'm by easily i mean a mile or less you know, we will take the train do our thing come back get on the train and head back to where we were staying. If we can't get to the site by train easily, then we would take uh, the the APO, the ACO Dispo people or a tour group that would take you into that area. So that's that's one way. You'll see this when I go through some of the chateaus. And then I thought I'd show you this. This is the main train station in Tours. They've just finished refurbishing it. It was designed by Baron Haussmann, who was the man who designed the train stations in Paris, particularly particularly what is now the Museum d'Orsay. And the ironwork and the construction on this building was done by Gustave Eiffel. So they have restored this, and you can walk through and see the the restored train station and the, and the incredible work there. But Tours is a good good place to go to. I mean, there was one of the days that we left our little small community and went to Tours and took the train to Chinon. And we would have taken another day and gone up to Angers, except I'd made a mistake and, and booked the wrong time. So that's the ways you can get around. Whatever you're comfortable with, there's all sorts of ways to accommodate you. And the amount of days you want to do is up to you. After transportation, the next most important thing is where are you going to stay? Now, there's hotels, there's bed and breakfast, there's small hotels, there's what I call chateaus and breakfast. You have all sorts of choices. Again, I use Hotels.com for this, but there's all sorts of hotel groups that you can look at. You, you pick the place you'd like to go to and then start looking at price, location, and whatever else. I'm always looking at location. Price will come into play depending on what's going on. So in 2016, when Sherry and I went to the Loire for the first time, we are going to be there for five days. 
turned out to be a good thing because it rained four of those days. And one of the things we were trying to do is a balloon trip. That was scheduled for our first day of arrival and it didn't happen until the last day of our arrival. So we are staying at Ambois and here it is on the map. And what we are going to see in 2016 is we're going to see Ambois. There's actually two days where we did everything that was in there. The beautiful Chateau, the home where um, Leonardo da Vinci lived, the small town itself. Then we took a day trip with Aco Dispo. And we went to Chononceau, we went to Giverny, and we went to Chambord. And then we had our balloon flight. And then we had a day where we kind of wandered around the, the whole area and looked at the little islands and other things like that. So that's what we ended up doing. So our hotel that we stayed at here in Amboise is the Bellevue. And it's about three quarters of a mile to a mile from the train station. It was raining when we came in. And when we're carrying suitcases, we usually take a, take a taxi. It's not a big deal. And so we had a nice, nice room. I will do a, a separate show on the hotels. As you can see, Sherry is here on our, our back porch. There were three or four of the rooms that you could then stand on it and then look over the Loire River. And so that's pretty much a standard hotel. Actually, this one was used by some of the tour groups that Rick Steve sponsors. You got free breakfast as well. Then we went, when we went back in 2018, we did something different. We went to a small town. We went to the little town of Anzane Chaumont. And this is the train station there, which was about a mile from where we were staying. And every morning we'd get up and we would walk down to the train station and go and visit. So here's the map. Here's where the little town of Anzane is located. And we went all over. We went to Chaumont. We went through the chateau there. We went into tours, visited tours. We took a trip out of tours where we went to Villandry and we went to Aze Le Rideau and we did that with the Aco Dispo people. We did a, tra- a day where we got went into tours and then took the train to Chinon and spent the whole day at Chinon. And then another day we got up and took the train up to Bois and spent the day at Bois. And then on the way back, we stopped did a little river trip the last day. We went ballooning again. So we did everything from the little town. Now, the first time we were there, the first day we were there, we were supposed to stay. When we were there in 2016, the pilot of our balloon had a holiday let. And so we were going to stay in her holiday let, which was 400 euros for six days. And that was really, really nice. And it's, it's in the little community. But I made a mistake, and I had an extra day that I hadn't calculated for. And then on top of it, we had a, a big, lots of train strikes at the time we were there in 2018. So I needed to spend two nights someplace else. So we opted to stay in what I call the Chateau and Breakfast. This is what you see here. This is called La Duse, or the Moat. It was built in the 1200s and then remodeled again during the 1500s and 1600s and then has been refurbished it. We stayed in this building, which is the old turret. The foundation of it is the old turret. And on the inside of it, here's the bedroom. And it, they did art installations. They did all kinds of stuff. But I I'm, will I will do a whole show on just this. And we stayed here for two days. They picked us up at the, at the train station. And when we wanted to see Chaumont, they drove us to Chaumont and dropped us off. And we walked back. They were... They were astonished that we were walking all over the place. Sherry and I are in pretty good shape. I mean, I'm just 67, and I usually work out at the gym and do three miles in under an hour. And and Sherry's 74, and she's in good shape. I just have to make sure I don't walk off and leave her sometimes. She claims that I do the Bataan Death March when I'm in a hurry. So I try not to do that. So we stayed at Ledoux for a couple of days, and then we went to here. This is the, the holiday let by... Uh, Lorenz. It's part of the old stable to the old chateau. This is the interior of it. It's fully modern on the interior. We'll, it, we'll, you can have a whole family stay here and air conditioning. It had washers, washer and dryer and all sorts of other stuff. But you have to be careful. You stay in a small town and you're staying at a, at a holiday let or even at the chateau. Small towns don't have restaurants that are open all the time. They had a nice restaurant, but it wasn't open necessarily every day. Uh, they had a bakery where you could get your baguettes and things in the morning. They had a tobacco place where you could get a drink and have some breakfast if you wanted to or a sandwich later on. And they did indeed have a little shopping center where you could go and buy groceries. When we moved from the Moat House to the Holiday Let, it was Sunday. 
And we made the change at noon, and we figured this isn't any big deal. Once we settle in, we'll walk down to the uh, grocery store and get groceries. On Sunday, they closed before noon. So there wasn't any place to eat on Sunday, except there was a a hamburger joint that opened for two hours at 7 o'clock at night. And we were able to walk down there and get something to eat. So be aware when you're in a small village, know when (laughs) the food is going to be available. In Amboise, there wasn't that problem. They had restaurants all over the place. But in the little small communities, it's a little different. So you've come to the Loire Valley. What do you want to see? What is there to see? Namely, chateaus, first of all. Now, I'm just going to give you a brief discussion and show you a few pictures of each of the chateaus that we have visited. Later on, Sherry and I will go through a detailed walkthrough of all of these chateaus. It takes quite a while. So let's get started. Here we are in the town of Amboise. This is in 2016. And so we are staying here. And so we are taking a tour, I should say, with Akko Dispo gentleman who is going to pick us up at Amboise, which is one of the reasons why we stayed there. So he is going to pick us up here. And we're going to, in the day, go to Chononceau, right here. Then we're going to go to Giverny, up here. And then we're going to go to Chambord. And then when we're finished with Chambord, then he will take us back and drop us off at the information Tourist Information Center in Amboise, which is three blocks from where we were staying. So our first stop is... At Chonalso. Everybody has probably seen this beautiful building across the Cher River, which was a boundary line during World War II between free France and German controlled France. And parties would be held and the people would go into the into the bridge ballroom area and then go out the other side. So they smuggled a lot of people out from that direction. When we went in, they suggested that we start at certain places in the building and then move to others that are more popular. And the kitchen is stunning. And Sherry, as you've probably already learned, is a copper nut. And they have more copper in the chateau than you could shake a stick at. So here we are in the kitchen, which was wonderful. We were there pretty much all on our own. We toured the rest of the building. Here's what the hallway, the ballroom area looks like when you go across to the other side and look out over the river. Here's one of the many rooms with the accoutrements of the Renaissance period, the queen's room, king's room, all sorts of things. So we had a wonderful time here. We were here about two and a half hours, had a little something to eat and wandered the grounds. Then we moved on to Giverny. Now, this is one that a lot of people aren't aware of. Usually, if you know anything about it, it's because you see the YouTube pictures of them feeding the hunting dogs and they come out but was a little disappointed this is one of the oldest continuously owned um, chateaus by a family but it was completely torn down from the middle ages after one of their relatives shall we say uh, his wife was cheating on him and so he poisoned her and and killed the other guy. And it was kind of an embarrassment to the family. So they reconstructed it. It's very nice. But a lot of the rooms have modern period furniture in it. My modern, I mean 1700s, 1800s. But here's one of the uh, the fancier rooms that they had there, one of the one of the bedrooms. And of course, this family has always been big in the hunting. So here is the kennel where they have all the dogs and they feed them X number of times a day. And while we were here, there was a large group of French students that were there also. And And so Sherry photobombed their group at the little picture frame where you see the Chateau and the Giverny. So we have a bunch of people going, who is that redhead in this particular picture? So we were there about an hour, hour and a half, and we get back in in the van and we go off to Chambord, which was built by Francis I. Really didn't stay here very often, but it has a lot of the result of his good friend Leonardo da Vinci. Here is a picture of me standing out in front of the main entrance. And then when you go in, you have the double helix staircase. There are actually two of these and they have all the different rooms. This is one of them that is furnished with period furniture. We were here an hour and a half, but this was the year that we went and it rained practically the whole time we were in France. And later on, this was, here's a picture showing Chambord after the peak of the of the rain that they had in the month of May and June. Uh, it did not flood the palace, but it did come up to the foundation. So that was our little tour with Akko Dispo. Then we went back to Ambois, and we've spent a couple of days there. So what do you see when you're in Ambois? Well, here is the main palace, uh, which is probably only a third of what the original palace was in the Renaissance period. 
can walk in, tour the whole thing. There's a little chapel of St. Hebert, which is where Leonardo da Vinci's body was moved after being out in the, in the grounds for several hundred years. And so you could say hello to him. Here's the beautiful view from the battlements. There's an island uh, in between the mainland over here and the other side of the river on the other side. Train station is on the other side of the, of the island. There's a lot of interesting things to do on the island as well. But inside the main chateau, here is the throne in the throne room. And then here is one of the royal bed chambers. And then again, we have a nice view showing the river. There's lots of places to stay in Amboise. You can stay in, there's actually some hotels down in this region. Then the next day, we went to church. One of the church, well, the church that's functioning within Amboise is one of the oldest in the area. Only the city of Tours has an older church. And so we went to church, happened to be First Communion, so it was full. And then we went to see at Clau Luce, which is where Leonardo da Vinci stayed when Francis convinced him to come to France and do his thing. So the tour here is 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 really fun. This is da Vinci's bedchamber, and you can go through all the different rooms in the house. It was also the Queen's place at one point. He kept her kind of separated. If you go down into the basement, you see this tunnel. There was a tunnel access from this building all the way to the palace. Now, it has since been closed and damaged, but it is partially there. And they have this nice uh, cutout of Da Vinci in the back of it. And then you go out into the grounds at Cloud Lucy, and they have full-size models of some of Da Vinci's inventions. So there I am in the tank. That was that was a good. Now we're going to look at some of the places that we saw in 2018. Now in 2018, we stayed at the little town of Anzane. And this is a little village. I'll take you. We'll do a little tour of the little village later on. But what we're doing here is staying and taking the train to wherever we want to go. Now, initially, when we arrived, the people at the moat, castle and breakfast, as they call it, chateau and breakfast, we asked if, if they could drop us off at Chaumont, which is the chateau that was used Catherine de' Medici while... Her husband's mistress, Diana Poitier, was staying at Chononceau. After the death of her husband, she switched. So they took us up and dropped us off, and we wandered around through this area. This picture that I'm showing you is from a balloon flight that we took in 2016. It's a beautiful castle. It's the main entrance. Lots of, of the original furniture, tapestries. Um, there's the main courtyard. Here's the view of the river, the Loire River. And at the base of this chateau is a little town, which also has a little be at bed and breakfasts and, and, and places to stay, but there's a, a, a boat ride that you can do from here, which we did later on. So that was one day. We walked back. It's probably two and a half miles back to the hotel, but that's good, to the to the moat. Following day, we decided we would go to Bois. So we went to the train station, got on the train. About 20 minutes, 25 minutes later, we're in Bois, and I get out, walk to the main chateau, and here is the, the Chateau Bois, which you can see from its construction has all of these different periods of time with add-ons. You have the one with, the, again, the double helix staircase, which is the Renaissance period, 14, 1500s, and then you have the later additions that come in here. Uh, this chateau is noted for its famous murders. The death of Henry III took place here, where he's assassinated, and then uh, the assassination of Henry of Geese allows Henry the Fourth to ultimately take over France. But this is the bedroom where Henry the Third was killed, and they have a nice armory. They have all sorts of things. This is the gigantic uh, throne area, and they have it set up so that they have a mock-up throne so that you two can pretend to be the king and queen of France, and why not? Let's take the opportunity. So we get on the train. We go back to Anzane. The next day, we're going to do an Echo Dispo tour. There's too many things to see, and we can't get to them. So we get up in the morning and take the train from Anzane to Tours. And in Tours, we go to see St. Martin of Tours, the famous uh, relics. This is the new church that they've constructed, and down in the, in the basement they have his relics this was a major pilgrimage site in the middle ages of course this is where the attack the invasion uh, by the muslims from spain which triggered charles martel to lead the frankish army out and defeat them at the battle of tours which is actually at poitiers then it's a big deal uh, this is a model 
of the original church, which was absolutely massive. There's a map showing how large it was. You're talking about six or seven city blocks, and there's two towers left. This is the bell tower that's left. This is at one end, and then there's another tower where one of Charlemagne's wives was buried. And so then we get to meet our, our gentlemen, and we are going to go and see Philandry, and we are going to see Azzy Le Rideau. So this is really kind of an afternoon, half a day trip. So Villandry is huge. This is the one that's well known for its gigantic garden. And this is the only time we were at a chateau where we had a time constraint that it was physically impossible to see even about half of it. So what we did was, this is a view that gives you kind of a shot of the whole site when it's blooming. Again, it was raining when we were there in France. So it was not in bloom when we were there, but I, I thought you'd like to see what it actually looked like. I took the upper tier and went around shooting all the pictures of the upper tier. Sherry went down on the lower levels and shot pictures of the various flower gardens from that level. But we did not have enough time to go into the uh, the castle itself. But the fountains and the moats and everything else are just stunning. So we get back in the van and we go to Azzy Le Rideau, which is a relatively small chateau. I had been here in 1987. I think we were here for like 30 minutes, kind of ran around it. It's completely restored stored and been repaired. So it's magnificent at this point. It's actually surrounded completely by water. They have a diverted a little stream which keeps replenishing the water. So it has a little lake in the back of it, but it sits magnificently. And they had all kinds of displays. The rooms are, are restored. You can go up into the attic. So there's a view of one of the sitting rooms. And here are some of the, you know, set up for like dinner, but they've got some displays. And then here's a view of it from the outside. So it was nice. And then we went back and they dropped us off of tours. We took the train back to Anzain. And by the way, when I, when I mentioned the train, costs are, are minimal. I think it cost us $6 each to go to Bois round trip. It cost us about $15 each to go round trip the tours. No big deal. Normally you buy a ticket, it's good for the whole day. So if you miss your train, you can get on another one. It's okay. And then we went to Chinon. Again, we get up in the morning at Anzain, take the train to tours, and then take another train to Chinon, which is where Joan of Arc met the future Charles the Seventh, and you have the whole town. Now the train station is on one edge of the town, so it's about a mile walk through the town, which is really pretty. You get the giant statue of Joan. Joan is everywhere in this region, and then here is a view of the fortress of Chinon. Now this was used by Henry the Second, which is the King of England, Henry the Second, the father of Richard the Lionhearted. It's actually where he died up here. So you have an older medieval section and a more modern section. They have an elevator that will take you up there. You don't have to walk all the way up. When you do get up, they have a beautiful view. Uh, they have a really great selection of medieval replica weapons. There's a small trebuchet. They've got different types of cannons, which at this time in the four early 1400s were much more prevalent. Uh, they have one of the chapels, but it's destroyed. Uh, they have a marker saying that this is where Joan met Charles. And then you go upstairs, and this is the room where the king would have stayed. They don't have a lot of furniture here. This is a view back to the area where the king would have stayed. This would have been Charles the Dauphin from the fortress used by Henry II. So it's an all-day thing. We were there all day, had a wonderful time. They have a nice place to eat. You can eat in the village, do shopping in the village, great stuff. So those are some of the chateaus. By no means is that all of them, but that's some of the big ones. Okay, so you're all tired of seeing chateaus. What else is there to do? Well, one of the things there is, is to do some river excursions. There are different kinds of river excursions. I'm just going to show you the one that we've used. Here's an aerial view of some of the traditional boats that used to operate on the Loire River. They have nice little excursions. This one is about maybe an hour and a half. This operates from Anzane, actually right at the foot of the Chateau at Chaumont. Here is the headquarters where I made online reservations uh, we went to France, I walked up, showed him our ticket, and away we go. And we're out on the river, which is relatively shallow in this section. It gets it gets deeper as you get the tours. But there's one of the boats that's coming by. It's kind of a nature tour of the, of the river. We saw all sorts of birds. There are bird sanctuaries on islands. And we saw the beaver dens. And here's our guide boatman using a poling method of moving us on the river. And here's a view of Chaumont and the little town around it. From, from upstream, and after we reached a certain location, we just simply floated back down. It was relaxing.
relaxing. It was a lot of fun. It was interesting because it was a whole family who had booked the boat and they just added us on. They didn't speak any English and we didn't, I spoke enough French to kind of get get by. So, but we did a good job of communicating and it was really fun and relaxing. Now, the other thing you can do is there are many number of balloon flights that you can take. Uh, we are kind of spoiled in that we've been using the same balloon group for a couple of years, but that was why we went to Amboise when we did in 216, because they could pick us up there, and we thought that you could actually fly from Amboise. The problem was we were supposed to fly the first day we were there, and it rained for five days and we were there for six and we finally were able to get up and as a result of communicating with the people on the phone we did not do the big balloon trip that is where you have 20 people with you we did a private one where there was just sherry and i now the regular one is like 130 140 dollars a person it was 700 dollars for the two of us to go all by ourselves but that turned out to be a lot of fun i had never been up in a balloon sherry had been on many occasions so she was a little concerned with my height issue. I don't like heights, but I had no problem in the balloon at all. So as you can see, there's the Montgolfier group. It turns out later on that we found out that this company makes almost all the balloons for the people in the area and refurbish them and do all sorts of other things. We also had a female pilot who was just superb. So they picked us up at Ambois, drove us to actually to Anzane, where we watched the big balloon getting filled up. And then here is our balloon filling up. And then once we reached a certain point, they gave us some instructions on how to get in, what to do, and off we went. Uh, our balloon company is the one with the uh, the little ladybug on it. And so we float up, and then you can see Chaumont, and then we then floated over the Loire River and downstream. And then after about an hour and 15 minutes, uh, we then landed. Here's a picture of uh, Sherry and I with our pilot, Lorenz. Uh, we actually stayed in Lorenz's uh, holiday let when we we were there in 2018 and she took us up again. And in 2018, we selected a different spot. We wanted to go over Chonoso. So here we are. There's the balloon, montgolfieraerocom.fr. And we flew over Chonoso. Here's the, the high point of it. And then here's another view. One of the other companies, they actually went down and nearly landed on the spot and went up. And we had some much lower shots of it as well, but had a wonderful time. There we are landing, getting another picture some more champagne going off to Lorenz's holiday let for the evening and her and her associate who came by yeah, they they stayed and we talked for a couple of hours so we're very very good friends so if you want to go ballooning in the Loire Valley just let me know and I will provide you with all the information and then you can do this uh, we have not done this uh, biking along the river. So here's some people biking. You can rent bikes every, everywhere we were at. Uh, here is a map, a French map, showing the bike trails. And then here's something that I found. It's a group where you can be taking a river river tour on a barge that has its own bikes. So it's a barge tour with biking tour added in. So there's all sorts of things to do in the Loire River. There's stuff for kids, some for adults, everything. It's it's, it's really, really good. So I hope this helped you. I hope it didn't take too long in covering this, but it is kind of a, a detailed subject. So I hope this has been informative for you. And later on, Sherry and I will take you back to all of these places and give you a good walking tour through everything. So you can get a little closer view of it and the history. Thank you very much. Sherry and I hope you enjoyed the tour. Please come by our YouTube channel at Bob Packett on YouTube. It should be History According to Bob, but it comes up as Bob Packett. That's the easiest way to get to it. And please subscribe and leave some comments. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please uh, subscribe, give a comment, and if you like history, please come by historyaccordingtobob.com website where I do six podcasts a week on different topics in history, and there's all sorts of CDs and other things that you can see. So thank you very much.